In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about Apex theme styles and related performance. So let's start by just creating a simple new application. Uh, we just need an application with one page. So let's call it uh, my app with custom theme style uh, and create. So now we have our application. I will just run it and uh, as you can see this is a normal Apex application with the standard blue colored theme. I then, um, what I can do is do inspect element and go to network to see uh, the styles, the style sheets uh, related to to this application. So, what I have here is the core, um, the core Apex uh, CSS, and this is regardless of which theme you're using, it will it will use this, or the universal theme, it will use this, uh, and then there is a, another style sheet for the for the uh, so-called the Vita uh, theme style and that is as you can see it's being served uh, both these files are being served from the Oracle uh, content delivery network or CDN where these files are static and they have uh, an expires uh, header of uh, in the far future so they will be cached by the by the browser as you can see here now if I go to the theme roller and I want to customize my my application, give it some new colors. Watch what happens if I just I change a single thing. Um, let's say I want like an orange-ish uh, header color, like this. Uh, I will save it to say my orange theme style. And uh, I will set that as the current theme style. Okay. And we can close this. It will reload with the that as the current theme style. Now, if we go back to inspect element and the network tab and I do a reload. Uh, what we can see here is that now we don't have this Vita style sheet being served from the static uh, content delivery network, but we rather have this uh, long number dot CSS, which is which is the the new theme style, and it's uh, it's being served from from the database actually, because now this is uh, Apex has compiled this file, put it into my application files, and it's being served from the database. Through the uh, through the RDS uh, path alias, so uh, this does have uh, an expires header or should have an expires header so that it's cached the second time. But at least for the first time that you hit this application, this is an actual uh, another hit on the database. So you have the, the main page, the F procedure that renders the page, but then you also have uh, this separate database access just to get the file and uh, it looks like uh, yeah <laughs> we have the beach ball because it's it's a lot of data here and remember I just changed one single thing I changed to this orange color but we have this file that has been generated it's, it's uh, it contains all the styles not just my orange color because now this replaces the default theme style so, okay, you can see this file, you hit the database, there is a rather long uh, time to, to retrieve that file. It should be cached on the second hit, so maybe you're thinking no big deal, but if you have lots of users, then each of those, the first time they hit your application, they will download this extra file and it will hit the database. So 
if we can fix that and, and fetch it as a static file instead, that would be better. So what can you do? Uh, well, if you go to the um, shared components in, in Apex, to the user interface attributes, so you have the desktop interface, you have universal theme, and you have uh, your theme style that you made. And if you click on that, there will be a setting here saying the output CSS file URL. So now this is the reference to this file that is generated and is stored in the database. You can actually replace this with your own reference. So what we could do is, or what we what you would do is to go find this uh, find this CSS file uh, this one and let's open that in a new tab so you would uh, get all this put it in a file and then you would put it on your web server somewhere where you have all your other CSS files maybe you can if you want to minify it that's also a good thing to do. Uh, you just Google for CSS minifier and you will find a lot of services to do that. And you just paste in and you get you get uh, a minified CSS and it will be all in one line, just uh, all the white uh, space and indentation removed. Uh, so it, it cuts a few kilobytes of the of the size. So you take that and you save it somewhere and then you can put it in here. So let's say that you had uh, like a custom directory on the web server and then my app and CSS and then my orange theme. And if you minified it, maybe you put min in the file name like this. And then that becomes the reference instead of hitting the database. Uh, so now I actually already took something similar and I put it on, on S3, the Amazon simple storage service. And uh, I can paste that and I can say at the same time, read only so that this is, uh, that you can't use the theme roller to, to update the theme style anymore because it's, it's an in, in an external file. So obviously any changes won't uh, make any sense. So you do this at the end of the development cycle where you don't need to do any more changes to to your style theme style so um, let's see if we have uh, my app with the custom theme I reload it and we can see that now this this file is served from from the s3 bucket instead uh, and uh, and uh, that has an expires header and so on for far in the future. And it's, we can see that the, the time, the response time on that is, is quite uh, good and it's cached. So you, you would uh, not hit the database and it would be cached. So it's, it's, it's uh, good all over. So that was uh, what I wanted to, uh, to tell you about the theme styles. So remember that every time you use the theme roller to just change a single thing, whether it's a color or something else, then you get this file that is in the database and you should move it out if performance is important to you. That's it for now.